if we had two vectors and they were 20 newtons each and they got applied at 90 degrees to each other, we would comfortably say that we could draw the first 20 newton force, 90 degrees, the second 20 newton force, complete the parallelogram and then put the diagonal of the parallelogram as that resultant. If we use the scale of one centimeter represents five newtons, this would be a four centimeter line, this would be a four centimeter line. And then we would draw in the resultant, measure it, and we would find that it would convert into 28,7 newtons. And the angle here, if I measured it, would be 45 degrees. Let's draw that in. And the angle over here would also be 45 degrees. Now, the thing is that we can actually calculate that. So let's try and look at how we could do that with calculation. Calculation is more accurate. So I would draw a 20 Newton force. It doesn't need to be to scale. If you're drawing it in a test or an exam, you do need to use a ruler. And again, I'm going to complete this parallelogram. And I'm going to draw in a resultant as the diagonal. Now, if I consider this triangle over here, really doesn't matter which of the two triangles I consider, but let's go with that one. I've got 90 degrees over there, and I'm fairly interested in this angle, because this was my start point, and that was my finish point of my vector. So I'm quite interested in the angle that I have marked over there. Based on that angle, the side over here is going to be called my opposite side of a right angle triangle. This side here would be the adjacent side and the resultant over there could be considered the hypotenuse. So you would then be able to say, I know because it's a parallelogram that the opposite is 20, the adjacent is 20, and therefore if I'm looking for the hypotenuse, I can use Pythagoras. So I can say the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So I'd go 20 squared plus 20 squared is equal to h squared. So h is going to be equal to the square root of 20 squared plus 20 squared. It's going to be 400 plus 400, which is going to end up being 800 in total. And when I square root 800, I land up with 28,28 newtons. So I've calculated the value of that resultant. The next thing is, as we know, for a vector, there needs to be a direction. So if I'm taking a look at this direction over here, I am going to say that angle is equal to, if I know the opposite and I know the adjacent, I can say that tan of alpha is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, and that's going to be 20 divided by 20, and I land up with 1. Inverse tan function that, and my alpha is going to turn into a 45 degree angle. So that angle is 45 degrees, and I have now calculated my resultant angle. I can only at this stage do this for right angled triangles. It must be a right angled triangle to use your sine, cos and tan and to use Pythagoras. Equations, if I've got a triangle, my adjacent side is always going to be my x, my opposite side, so this is opposite from the angle that I'm interested in, is going to be my y, and my hypotenuse, which is the side opposite the right angle, is going to be my r. So I am then able to say that the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides or expressed differently x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Taking theta into consideration sine of theta is going to land up being opposite over hypotenuse. Cos of theta is going to land up being adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan of theta is going to land up being opposite over adjacent. And obviously those translate quite nicely into x's and y's. 
You know all of this from math, so it shouldn't be a problem at all. So we're going to land up with more accurate and, it's, and faster calculations if we use this. Some people will try to teach you that the, if you're trying to find the horizontal line, then it's always going to be um, cos. And if you're finding the opposite line, then it's always going to be um, sine. And uh, sorry, the vertical line is always going to be sine. I would always go from first principles and look at the triangle that you have been given. The important thing is to remember that this can only be used for right-angled triangles. Later on, you're going to, in maths, learn about a sine rule and a cosine rule, and those are used for triangles that have got different angles in them. But for now, we can only calculate with a um, right-angled triangle. So we've got this aeroplane, and it's flying at 500 kilometers per hour on a bearing of 30 degrees. At the same time, the wind is blowing at 30 kilometers per hour on a bearing of 120. It's a bit tricky because actually 30 degrees isn't 90 degrees and nor is 120 90 degrees. So I'm not sure how we're going to calculate it. Well, I am sure, but maybe you might be a bit confused right now. But if I were to take 120 degrees and subtract 30 degrees from it, we land up with 90 degrees. So suddenly that seems to make some sense as an option. So, drawing that out, I'm going to first draw my north-south bearing line. I'm going to measure my 30 degrees over there. I'm not going to draw this exactly to scale because I know I'm going to calculate it. On this line, I'm going to write 500 kilometers per hour. And then I am going to, again from my bearing line, draw measure 120 degrees. So this was 30 degrees. This is 120 degrees, and I draw the next line, and on it I write 30 kilometers per hour. What's important, firstly, is that I would have used a ruler if I wasn't working on a tablet. Secondly, that I start at exactly the same point for both vectors. Thirdly, that my vector lines are represented using an arrow. Then I need to ensure that I've labeled the angle and labeled the magnitude of the line. So in other words, 30 degrees, 500 kilometers per hour. 30 kilometers per hour and 120 kilometers per hour. Make that a little rounder. Now I complete my parallelogram. And I draw a resultant again from the same start point until I get diagonally across there. Put an R onto that. And now let's take a look at this diagram. I've got 90 degrees here. So I'm going to choose any one of these two triangles. And if you don't mind, I'm going to go with that one. I'm interested in this angle. It's not the 90 degrees because the 90 degrees goes all the way to the blue line over there. And I actually only want to go up to the green line. I still have a 90 degree in this triangle. So I am now going to say based on the angle that I have marked, that I have got an opposite, an adjacent, and a hypotenuse. So if I, and I know that the opposite is 500 kilometers per hour, because there's a rule that says the opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal in length. Then I am going to say, if I am interested in the length of the resultant, the resultant squared, which is h squared, is equal to the opposite squared plus the adjacent squared. Once I square those and then square root, I land up with 500, oh, 501 really. So 501 kilometers per hour. It's not a great answer because of the fact that we've got such a big difference between 530. So this 30 kilometer per hour wind hardly makes any difference to this resultant line over there. But if you're doing a calculation, it's accurate enough for you to tell me that it's 501 or 500,89 or 500,9, any of those. Now I need my angle. I know my opposite and adjacent, so I'm again going to use tan. Tan of alpha is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is 500 over 30. 
and my angle turns out to be equal to 86,56 or 57 if I round it off degrees 566. So the question asked me determine the velocity of the plane relative to the ground. So I have got over here this line, this 30 km per hour was on 120. I'm going to take away 86,57 and at that point I will have the bearing of my resultant line. So the bearing of my resultant line is going to be 120 minus 86,57. So my resultant is therefore equal to 501 kilometers per hour on a bearing or at 33 comma four three degrees relative to the ground. So in other words, if I was watching this aeroplane and I was on the ground, I would see it moving along a line that was 33 comma four three on a bearing of 33 comma four three.